this prosecutor is sort of accidentally saying the quiet part out loud, which is the left always assumes, regardless, if you're a guy using your Second Amendment right to carry a firearm, you're automatically the bad guy. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And welcome back for the Daily Dose of Stupid today. There was a lot of stupid that went on in the Rittenhouse case, and I really didn't know how to sort through all of it. I had, you know, I'm thankful, since we're talking about thanks, <clears throat> I am thankful that the court acquitted him and actually came to the right decision. I think that it should have never gone to trial to begin with. But really, this entire trial, if you watched it, is a case study in stupid. There was so much stupid, there's no way that I could cover all of it in a daily dose of stupid you had. The whole display where he holds the gun with the wrong hand. You remember the prosecutor in his argument has the the water can and the, uh, the, the he's using to basically represent the fire extinguisher and the AR-15. And he puts it down and shows how he would have come up and aimed the gun. And that was supposed to be their, their linchpin of proving that he was the aggressor. And then the, the other attorney just points out, but he's holding the gun with the wrong hand. Like, Kyle. Kyle would have had to have put it down, changed hands to his off hand to fit the picture that they were claiming showed that he, that he was holding it. Um, and another thing too, if you're going to have one thing as a prop and one thing as the real thing, wouldn't you, especially since he pointed the gun directly at the jury when he did this, uh, wouldn't you have the real fire extinguisher and then have a prop gun as opposed to a real firearm that could harm someone? Like, if you're going to use one as a stand-in, you pick the gun, not the fire extinguisher. So that was pretty dumb. You had, like I just alluded to, where he actually points the gun at the jury. That was pretty stupid, especially since he didn't check the gun and clear it. He didn't have the breech open. So, you know, theoretically, there could have been a live round in that gun. You, you never point a gun at anybody unless you intend to destroy it. That's one of the first things they teach you in gun safety. And if you look at the pictures, you can actually see his finger on the trigger. So it's not even off trigger like a, a person that actually knows something about gun safety would have done. He actually has it on the trigger. So lots of stupid going on in that one. It was almost like he was doing his favorite Alec Baldwin impersonation. Yeesh. Uh, but he also suggested that silence means guilt, which is a direct violation of the Fifth Amendment. He also asked about whether or not you were playing Call of Duty and Kyle Rittenhouse had to explain to him on the stand that Call of Duty is a video game and not real life. And those two things are not the same thing. That was pretty stupid. He asked why he was putting out fires or why he was running from the fire at one point. And Cal Rittenhouse goes, because it was as a fire. <laughs> that was a good one. He asked why he was putting out fires again, because it was a fire. He suggested that he was not part of the Kenosha community, despite the fact that his dad and most of his extended family lives in Kenosha. And he also maintains a part-time job in that city and has lots of friends there, which is the reason he was defending that property in the first place is because it was a friend of his. So he tried to act like he was some kind of foreigner from thousands of miles away when really the kid has spends half his time in Kenosha anyway. And then he also, um, to me, the funniest, one of the funniest things is when he brought up witnesses, the prosecution's own witnesses affirmed that it was self-defense, including one of the guys that Kyle Rittenhouse shot saying, no, no, he didn't fire until I raised, raised the gun at him. <laughs> The lawyer just face palms right there. He knows he knows he's got nothing there. So there was a lot of stupid going on in this trial. There's no question about that. But I want to show with share with you today what I thought was by far the stupidest moment of the entire trial. This is in the closing arguments by Prosecutor Binger here. You can't claim self-defense against an unarmed man like this. You lose the right to self-defense when you're the one who brought the gun, when you're the one creating the dam danger, when you're the one provoking other people. Yeah, that defeats the purpose of guns. The whole reason that you have a gun is so that you may use it in self-defense. But according to your definition here, the 
you you can't. If you have a gun, then you're automatically not acting in self-defense. When you bring a gun and you're the one causing the problem, which again, he's he's basically assuming there that if you have a gun, you're only there looking for trouble. You are the problem. You're the one creating the danger by the mere fact that you happen to have a gun on you. It's absolutely ridiculous to suggest that. It cuts against everything that we know about self-defense with firearms. You would completely defeat the purpose of guns if that standard were applied to everyone. And by the way, you can look at this study. This was done by the, the federal government in 2013, and it was published by the National Academics of Science, uh, National Academy, sorry, of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. Look at this. Defensive use of gun crimes is common a common occurrence, although the exact number remains disputed. Almost all national surveys estimates, estimates indicate that a defensive uses of the, by victims are at least as common as offenses used by criminals, with estimates of annual uses ranging from about 500,000 to more than 3 million in the context of about 300,000 violent crimes involving firearms in 2008. On the other hand, and, and it goes on to basically end itself out, but I mean, think about that. Now, obviously, because you're dealing with situations that are difficult to say how many lives would have been saved or how it would have played out differently if someone didn't have a gun, they're saying at minimum, it's about half a million cases of defensive use of firearms a year, and it could be as much as 3 million based on their estimates. Now, the actual number is probably somewhere closer to the middle, but those are the extremes. And so they're saying at minimum, you have about 200,000 more incidents of defensive uses of firearms than you do cases of gun crime, which would imply pretty strongly that a lot of these times where defensive use of firearm is used, the other person does not have a gun. And so by his standard, every person that's ever defended themselves with a gun where the other person didn't, that person should be locked away for murder. That's the standard he is presenting. So apparently there's anywhere from half a million to about 3 million more people per year that should be in federal penitentiaries or, or state penitentiaries, according to this clown. It's unbelievable how stupid that is. It cuts against everything we know about self-defense law. The idea that you're not allowed to defend yourself unless the other person also has a weapon that is somewhat comparable. What about the women that stop rapes with guns? Most of the time, their attacker does not have a gun. And so what they do is, the w women that conceal carry, they pull out their pistol, they put the guy on the ground, which they should, if they believe that he's trying to rape them or is in the process of trying to rape them. And by the way, that is the number one thing that is the determinant as to whether or not a woman, an attempted rape is completed on a woman or not. Well, I guess it would cut on both, both genders, but usually it's women, obviously. That is the number one thing. It, it brings the odds of a rape being completed from 50% to 2% if the woman has a gun on her. And yet they act as though, apparently, according to this guy, if a woman shoots her attempted rapist, then she should be put in prison for murder. That's the standard he is presenting. That even if he's trying to rape you, as long as he's unarmed, if you're the one with the gun that pulls it, you're the one creating the dangerous situation. See, this is why it's important to, instead of just saying what your instinct says or what your emotions would lead you to believe, that you actually play out these scenarios in your head and go, okay, if I applied the standard that I'm, that I'm espousing here, what would the end result actually look like? What would the end result be? It's clear this guy has never done that because if he gave it more than two seconds worth of thought, he would be like, oh yeah, well maybe there is a 95 pound woman that's defending herself against a 250 pound man with a firearm while he was trying to rape her that probably pre prevented a rape and may have saved her life. But they don't think about it from that standpoint. They think that every person that ever uses a gun in self-defense is some uh, MAGA hat wearing redneck that just wants to kill a bunch of people of minority status, which is hilarious because in this case, it was actually a bunch of white people that Kyle Rittenhouse shot. But they don't play that out. And what's unfortunate here is you almost feel like they would be unmoved by that, that they don't care if a few women have to get raped if it means that they are able to keep people from having guns. I mean, that's kind of the same attitude they adapted and uh, adopted in Loudoun County, where that quote unquote boy in a skirt, which I mean is accurate, he is a guy wearing a skirt, 
went into a women's restroom and raped two women and they swept it under the rug. When they had someone directly ask if they had had any incidents of somebody in the now gender neutral bathrooms doing anything wrong or untoward towards women, they said, nope, we don't know of any incident of this, even though the records show they knew about it at the time. They're like, well, if a girl has to get raped by a guy in a skirt, that's just the price of progress, right? No, that matters. And every single one of you should resign for having covered that up. That Their agenda takes precedence over people that are legitimate victims that are being harmed by their policies. In their mind, that's, that's just the eggs you have to crack to make an omelet. And by the way, they adopted the same attitude with Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, yeah, the kid probably would have died if he didn't have a gun and couldn't have used it in self-defense, but you know, that's that's the price you got to pay for Black Lives Matter being able to ride in a city. That's just that's that's one more egg you have to crack in the omelet. See, they're willing to do the blood sacrifices because this is their religion. It is a competing religion to Christianity, and that is why they're perfectly fine with making a few sacrifices as long as it means their agenda gets through. They are perfectly okay with that. There were people on the left actively rooting for this kid to either be dead and not have the gun or to be put away for life because he did have the gun. Th see, that's the thing that's uh, so powerful about this clip is this prosecutor is sort of accidentally saying the quiet part out loud, which is the left always assumes regardless, if you're a guy using your Second Amendment right to carry a firearm, you're automatically the bad guy. No matter what the circumstances surrounding, it doesn't matter that Kyle Rittenhouse tried to de-escalate the situation. It doesn't matter that he, you know, had somebody actually pepper spray him and assault him, and he decided not to, even though he would have been within his right to defend himself with his firearm, he decided not to do that because he didn't want to take a life if he didn't have to. If he didn't feel like his life was being threatened or endangered, he decided not to do that with the person that pepper sprayed him. He decided to uh, show up and, and help people out, even some of the protesters that were there that night. Help them out with, with medical aid. They put out fires where people were trying to push a dumpster into a gas station to blow it up, and he put the fire out. That's another thing that happened that they don't tell you about. And so it is really just astounding that all of this is happening. And it doesn't matter that all the facts, all the video evidence were in his favor. Everything showed very clearly that he was not the aggressor, that he was running from people, that he had a guy jump kick him in the head, that he had a person hit him in the head with a skateboard, that he had a person literally pull a gun on him and point it at him. And he neutralized all those threats. Doesn't matter that all the evidence went in one direction. They would have rather him not been able to get off simply because he was a guy carrying a gun. In their mind, that's enough to make you the bad guy. And it really is absurd. That was the insight into this person's mind. And, and, and that kid, frankly, showed far more strength than he had to, more than I probably would have, frankly, in, in that same situation. And so I admire him from, from at least that perspective. But it doesn't matter what you did or all the evidence is in your favor. They have to push their agenda, which is people having guns to defend themselves is bad, especially when you're attacking and defending yourself from people that politically align with us. That's the main thing. And I just, I can't imagine the level of restraint that that takes. But, you know, sometimes there are occasions where a guy with the gun is the bad guy and is the aggressor. I think the Ahmed Aubrey case is a really good case of that. As I said from the beginning when I saw the tape, it seems to me that the guys in the truck with the guns, they were the aggressors. And just because Ahmed Aubrey was unarmed, and they were, does not mean that he was not in the right. He acted in self-defense. And I think, I hope that they put these guys away for that because the video evidence seems to clearly suggest that Ahmed Aubrey did what any reasonable, rational person would when he was in fear for his life. And so in that occasion, the guys with the guns were the aggressors and were the ones that were acting not in accordance with the law. So what's the difference there? their behavior, and how they used it. See, the gun is not the problem. That's the case liberals always try to make. The gun's not the issue here. It's how the people with the guns behaved. Kyle Rittenhouse did exactly what he should have done and acted in legitimate self-defense because he was afraid for his own life. These other guys decided they were going to play vigilante and go after a crook and try to, which 
they didn't actually have any evidence that he was a crook. He was trespassing, but you know, there were no charges filed. It wasn't even their land. And so they decided to go out and play vigilante. And then in that case, they were the aggressors and they should be held legally responsible for that. Ahmed Aubrey, like Rittenhouse, was acting in self-defense. The only thing that Aubrey did wrong, so far as I can tell, is not having a gun himself so that he could have fired back. That's what should have happened. But I digress. You see, the left wants you to be scared of exercising your rights. Because one of two things was going to happen at the end of the Rittenhouse case. Either criminals were going to be scared or they were going to be emboldened. Either rioters in the name of Black Lives Matter or Antifa or whatever else were going to have a case study to look at to go, oh, see, we can basically do whatever we want, hit people in the heads with skateboards, try to shoot at them. And if they attack us back, they're going to prison. That, that's, that has an emboldening of power behind it. That has something that is going to cause those people to be more emboldened. Or we see what happened here. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't go out there and riot and burn stuff and tear things down because I can get shot. Especially if I attack somebody or try to attack someone else's property. And that's what should have happened. I'm genuinely glad that there may be a, a person that supports Black Lives Matter or Antifa that thinks, okay, I can go out and protest, but maybe it's not such a good idea to try to burn up a car lot or hit somebody in the head with a skateboard. Because they might shoot back and then they might get off scot-free, which is exactly what should happen if they're acting in self-defense. And so one of those two things were was going to happen regardless. The left wanted the criminals to be emboldened. They wanted them to feel like they have license to do whatever they want as long as it's a person that they politically disagree with. Luckily, the opposite actually happened. And hopefully, these violent criminals and savages will actually think twice before attacking a person, because it could cost them their life, which it should if they're assaulting somebody. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?